Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're back in the realm of digital electronics and we're going to do a little bit more on that the ubiquitous latch we've already looked at it um, in, in two applications as a memory and as frequency divider and I want to develop that theme a little bit further I did hint at it in the previous video so this time we're going to look at using latches as counters so let's go straight to the bench and see where we're up to Okay, so a little bit of practical latch revision. We've got two uh, 74 LS74s here. Each contains two latches, and I've got them daisy chained together. I'm feeling feeding a logic pulse signal here from the signal generator, and the LEDs, um, if your eyes were quick enough, are actually all flashing. Uh, they're flashing at speeds far too fast for us to see at the moment, and so they're actually only on 50% of the time, really. But um, to me they all appear to be on and I'm sure they, they do to you as well. So we've got each each latch divides the frequency in half so we've got one here we've got a half and then a quarter and then an eighth and then a sixteenth if you like. Um, so the division's going on there and um, if you want to probe that with a scope you'd be able to see that but uh, that's probably a little difficult. So we've got one kilohertz being fed in there so let's now change that frequency to 100 hertz and mm, can't really see that one flashing at 100 hertz to be honest but I can certainly start to see something there at 50 hertz uh, 25 is obviously very obvious as is 12 and a half and six and a quarter so hopefully now you're seeing frequency division really is going on and it's a, not perhaps quite a nice way to visualize it so let's now uh, drop the frequency down to 60 hertz in fact, let's go to 50 actually because that's the UK mains frequency and mm, I can't tell whether that's flashing or not, but I can, the other ones certainly are. But if we now reduce it to 10 hertz, suddenly it all becomes very obvious that we've got half, half again, half of that again, and half of that again. So yeah, frequency division definitely happening, but you may recall that at the end of the last video I suggested another way to look at frequency division. I'm now reducing the frequency to 1 hertz, so that's now 1 flash a second. So that's going to be 1 flash every 2 seconds. That's going to be 1 flash every 4 seconds, etc, etc. Another way to think about this frequency division is that these LEDs are now effectively indicating how many pulses have occurred at the input. So in the case of that LED, um, that will flash once for every two pulses. That one will flash once for every four pulses. So that's actually um, measuring or counting, if you like, um, the number of pulses is maybe one way to think about that. So let's now explore that um, latch application um, of being able to count. And let's look first of all at this circuit, but then let's have a think about some other uh, circuits that are available to us to enable us to to count in a, in a meaningful way okay that's the breadboard layout then of the circuit we've just been uh, observing the uh, the four latches and that uh, transposes to a circuit diagram that looks something like that four latches daisy chained together input uh, frequency on the left at the clock input and at each Q output on each latch we should get uh, the frequency divided by two. Uh, for clarity on here I've missed off the fact that I've got several LEDs but the arrangement's very simple. I've just got an LED connected to ground on the output of each latch. The chip itself consists of two latches um, uh, and hence the dual latch label there and there are some other connections to do with uh, set and reset but uh, we don't need to concern ourselves with those for this uh, application as a frequency divider. Okay now there are some custom chips for want of a better word so let's start with the uh, CMOS 4017 which is uh, a decade counter sometimes also referred to as a Johnson counter and this is a not the 74 LS series obviously this is a, a CMOS version but it's uh, it's a logically chip nonetheless so what's in there well there's quite a lot in there here's the um, internal circuit diagram from a data sheet and I think the first thing to note is that big row of latches there sort of about two-thirds of the way down so we've got five latches a 
arranged in a cascade there's a little bit more to it than that because we've got uh, several gates doing some uh, clever trickery in between some of the gates uh, so we've got not gates and gates nor gates and nan gates there and then you've got um, a array of nan gates and inverters which essentially um, provide the, the switching logic to output the um, the data to each to each of the ten lines and to get your uh, your uh, put onto onto the LED. So what we're going to do is really simple. Uh, chip there on the left, and we're simply taking the outputs and just taking them through LEDs to ground. And then we're going to put the input uh, into the clock uh, setting. So let's um, let's have a look at that on the bench. Okay, so uh, let's now have a look at the. I see I've just described which is the the 4017 decade counter and I've got it here and I'm going to sh I've got the previous four latch uh, circuit here just uh, as a reminder and I'm going to jump the input pulse onto the input of that chip and then I've got each of its um, its nine outputs attached to sorry ten outputs attached to an LED uh, in order and so let's now let's now power on so power on, we just get a random starting position if we take the power off and then power up again. It um, yeah usually seems to power up at that position, but there's no um, uh, particular reason for that. It's just how it is. So now let's switch on the input signal. So we start the pulses and we're going to start at one hertz. So we can see our one hertz there, and you can hopefully also see here. This is busily counting, if you like, from 1 to 10. Now if you were to uh, just simply uh, stop by each LED, you'd see you're getting a division of 10 going on at every stage. And this chip, incidentally, and being a decimal counter is quite a popular chip for using uh, for sequencing of, um, of lights, um, because it ticks along at, at 10 etc like that. If I now um, up the frequency to 10 Hertz there, there's 10 Hertz um, it's pretty meaningless there but you can indeed see now it, it's counting to 1 to 10. I'm sure there were plenty of um, pinball machines probably ended up with a few 4017s in them. Um, so if we go up to 100 Hertz, that's 100 Hertz yeah, you can now see that's sequencing away, and we're starting to get fairly meaningless reading off off that LED, and that one's only only just. But you can see the two different counting arrangements that are going on. If I up that to 500 to 500 hertz, there, uh, those LEDs now all appear to be on. But the counting is going on, as you can see from the indications in that one. So that's your 4017. Let's go back to 10 hertz you can see it counting away so that's quite a handy solution if you want a, a meaning a meaningful output that's got um, let's say uh, number indications that, that light up as appropriate you could use the chip for that application um, but what else can we do um, with counter chips so let's take a look at another chip um, and see what that can do okay let's now take a look at another counting chip and this is the another, again another CMOS chip the CD4020 which uh, is a binary counter and uh, also obviously a frequency divider but um, binary counter contains an awful lot of latches and, and some logic um, so that's essentially what you get with the various outputs there which allow this counter to take a, a pulse and to uh, produce a, an output which is uh, in binary format. Now one other thing to note on the top left there the input says bar CP and that's because the uh, transition into a into what what's recognized as a clock pulse um, occurs when uh, the input CP goes low so it's that's the only difference between that and the previous chip um, as far as we're concerned it uh, doesn't make any difference and the MR is just uh, the master reset again we're not going to bother with that we're just going to uh, 
we're just going to get the chip counting. So on the breadboard then, very similar arrangement, big row of LEDs and we've got the chip there. Um, looks a little bit like spaghetti, sorry that's unavoidable really. But again the outputs are capable of driving an LED and without uh, without runaway current. So let's um, let's go back onto the bench and have a look at that. Okay and the um, third example of counting then Apologies, the breadboard starting to look a bit messy. This is the 4020 uh, binary counter, and I've got 10 LEDs there, and the 11th one, I'm afraid I uh, hadn't got one of the, the same sort, but they're all green. And I've just got the original circuit hooked up here, um, so you can see the, the, the four latches working away. So the blue LED is the input uh, frequency and that's jumped to both so let's first of all power up and in the case of the 402 it powers up at 1 since we're reading here from least significant bit to most significant bit if you into your computers that'll make sense um, so now let's start the pulses and we're going to start it at 1 kilohertz and nothing really very meaningful going on here it is flashing but very fast but i just wanted to show those of you who are into your binary that it really is counting up in in binary and eventually when it gets all the way up it'll start again so if we reduce that down to whoops um 500 hertz like so there we go that's 500 hertz starting to get something slightly meaningful off the old uh, fourth latch now and you can see this one's um, counting away in binary and we are actually starting to get you know something that you could make some sense of so I'll drop that down to 100 Hertz there that's 100 Hertz and yeah it's actually readable now and you can see here we've got 150, 12 and a half, etc. etc. So a binary output um, is potentially useful. It's clearly useful from a, a computing point of view because you're getting a an indication uh, in a way that a computer could understand of the uh, of the incoming um, pulses. And indeed, some early computers actually had uh, binary displays like this. Um, and uh, I've seen one or two of those on some uh, some of the computing YouTube channels um, and it seems extremely archaic now but of course uh, long ago it was all people had and, and it was high tech and it was just was used that way and this is still potentially valuable for telling you for instance the status of a, a register in a, in a computer so if I finally just drop that down to 10 Hertz if you were really keen, in fact I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll stop the count, I'll reinitialize the power, that's just decided to start up, yeah, start, that's now zero, so I'll start the pulses, and so that's the input count, and we're slowly counting away in binary, and those will all come red, and then we'll hop onto that one, when I said red I meant green, <laughs> don't know why I said red uh, and again the same thing there once all those are lit up you'll find we've reached all ones there and so that will become a one that will go back to zeros and we are still counting up again so it is um, producing a meaningful binary count okay so there you have it um, two kinds of counters arguably three if you want to include the four latches at the, the, the very beginning which was, was part of the revision um, the decade counter and the binary counter now there's a little bit more that I want to do particularly as regards to the binary counter so there's certainly going to be uh, a follow-up video to this maybe even two but we'll see how production of that um, follow-up video goes I might need to make make two out of it. Um, hope you're enjoying the videos. I've been learning an awful lot about digital electronics while I've been preparing these videos. Hopefully you are too and it's getting you thinking. Again, um, I'd encourage you as I often do, get yourself a breadboard and a few components. This isn't complicated circuitry. You know, you can look at what's going on here using LEDs. You don't even need an oscilloscope. 
Um, you could generate your pulses using a flashing LED if you want to. That's that's more than possible as well. So yeah, um, get out there in the real world and um, get get a breadboard and get uh, get experimenting. Learn a few things. Maybe even uh, make a few videos, and we can learn from you too. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please click the thumbs up. That would be great. If you're not already a subscriber, it would really help me if you could subscribe as well as liking. Um, that certainly helps. It costs nothing, but it helps the channel. Hopefully, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching.